Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to take a look at this, the Latte Panda 3 Delta from DF Robot. This is a powerful single board computer with a quad core Intel processor, which means it can run not just mainstream Linux distros, but also Windows 10 and Windows 11. Before we begin, I want to make it clear I've been loaned this for review by DF Robot. I'll be returning it to them after I've made the video. And this means I've not received anything of value to help me make the video, so this is not sponsored content. So, with that clear, let's go and take a closer look. Right. Here we have the Latte Panda 3 Delta, or to give it its full name, the Latte Panda 3 Delta 864, with the last three numbers indicating that this board has got 8GB of RAM and 64GB of onboard flash storage. As usual with a DF Robot product, the packaging is absolutely beautiful. We've even got the full specs on the side of the box, but uh, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We first need to get inside, so let's just take off the uh, sleeve like that and uh, open it up. Very exciting, and oh yes, as with previous Latte Panda models, we have the board in the top and its little plastic housing like that. Let's take it out. Oh, it's opening itself. Got to be careful here. There we are. We've got to, let's open it like that. And here's the board, and under here there may be other things, I don't know. Oh yes, we've got a Wi-Fi antennas there, Bluetooth antennas, and some stickers. And then under here we have a power supply. This is a 45 watt USB-C power supply. But uh, let's get rid of that for now. Come back to the board itself. Very exciting to be handling a brand new single board computer. What a lovely piece of equipment. And before we talk about the specifications of this board, let's compare it to its predecessors, as over here I've got first and second generation Latte Pandas. So let's bring in the third generation. There we are. And as we can see, very similar in form factor to the second generation. I think exactly the same width. It is the same width with the connectors in the same place at either end, but slightly longer. And just in case you're wondering, we've got here a Raspberry Pi, which is clearly much smaller than a Latte Panda 3 Delta, but then a Latte Panda 3 Delta has got a lot more power and a lot more connectivity. At the heart of this new Latte Panda, hidden safety away beneath its custom heatsink and fan, we have got a quad-core Intel Celeron N5105 CPU, with a base frequency of 2 GHz bursting to 2.9 GHz. This is an 11th generation mobile chip with Intel UHD graphics. As previously noted, the board has got 8 GB of RAM, which is 2933 MHz low power DDR4, along with 64 GB of EMMC 5.1 flash storage. And the board also has TPM 2.0, so there should be no problems with Windows 11, as well as Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2 wireless connectivity. If we take a look at the first short edge, we find three Type-A USB ports, the first of which is USB 3.2 Gen 2, so offering 10 gigabits per second connectivity, whilst the other two are USB 3.2 Gen 1, or what we used to call USB 3.0, so provide a 5 gigabits per second connection. If we turn to the first long edge, we find a real-time clock battery, a connector for the CPU fan, a power button, and down here, a reset switch for the onboard Arduino Leonardo 80 Mega 32U4 coprocessor. And then in the middle, we can't have missed it, we've got a GPIO connector, which in part provides connectivity for the Arduino, but there's also other connectivity here for the BIOS and power lines. Turning to the second short edge, we find an HDMI 2.0 connector, supporting a resolution of 4096 by 2160 at up to 60 frames a second, as well as a gigabit Ethernet port and a 3.5mm headphone socket. Finally, we have a USB-C connector that offers DisplayPort 1.4 functionality, or which can be used to power the board. 
Talking of which, around the corner on the second long edge, we find an alternative 12 volt DC power port and over here, a header for an offboard power button. And then in the middle, we've got a second GPIO connector, which offers all kinds of useful connectivity, including Arduino audio, RS-232, and we can also connect here a USB 2 port. And if you're wondering why do all the connectors on the USB 2 port here have ground written on them, if we take a peek around the other side, we can see the labels for the 5 volt and the data connectors. Now, I don't want to upset the board, but I would like to turn it over, so I will. I'll do it gently. Sorry, board, there we are. You're now upside down, because underneath there's quite a few other features to point out. Not least here, we've got two M.2 slots, and the lower one here is M keyed, so it can take an NVMe SSD, and the higher one is B keyed, so it can take a SATA SSD, or a 5G or a 4G wireless module. Also under the board, we can see the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth module, to which we'll have great fun plugging in antenna later on. And we can also see the EMMC flash module, which we can see is from SanDisk, which is always a good sign. And then finally here, we've got a microSD card slot, and we've got a pair of EDP and touch connectors that support an LCD touch panel up to 1920 by 1080 in resolution. And so there we are. This is the Latte Panda 3 Delta, a very powerful single board computer with a great deal of connectivity. And the final thing I need to tell you about is, of course, the price, which for the board, including its power supply and with an unactivated version of Windows 10 installed, is $279 or currently about £230 or €270. Euros. Or, if you wish, you can pay $339, or roughly £280 or €300, Euros, if you want Windows 10 activated with an enterprise license. Right, I've now connected things up as you can see, so we'll turn on the power at the wall outlet. There we go, and we now need to press a little power switch down here on the board, Press it in like that, and oh yes, that looks good. Some activity there, very encouraging, and the board I think should be booting. And yes, on the screen, we have got the little Latte Panda logo with its little panda eyes and panda nose and panda mouth. And hopefully soon we'll see some evidence we're gonna be booting into Windows. There we are. So we'll now apply the magic of filmmaking to speed forward in time. And here we are arriving on a Windows 10 desktop. And this is not my first boot. I have gone in as usual and done a few scaling changes. And of course, Windows wanted to install lots of updates. But basically, what you see here is what you get straight out of the box. And I can report that what we have is a very responsive, small form factor Windows system. This is a very impressive indeed. And I think we'll launch the Edge browser. Someone has to do it every now and then, and it'll take us to uh, explaining computers. There we are, and we will do a YouTube playback test, just my standard 1080p test, given how I'm recording things here, but it'll give us an idea of how things are working. There we are, let's go full screen and make sure we're actually in 1080p. I never trust the automatic system there, and we'll bring up stats for nerds. And uh, there we are. Once it had started off, no drop frames, things are working very well indeed. And this board should easily have the power to stream 4K, 60p, HDR, all that kind of stuff, this board should be great for a media streaming device. So let's come out of that like that and open up the file explorer and go to uh, this PC over there where we can see that the C drive on the system, this is our EMMC flash module. This is just over half full with Windows installed on it. The only things that have been added to this system are Windows updates and Crystal Dismark, which I've got over here. I want to use that in some tests. And talking of which, as you might have noticed, I've got a second drive on this system, which is a WD Black NVMe SSD, which I fitted to the board before connecting it up. So let's run up Crystal Disk Mark and do some tests. That should be rather interesting. And we'll start out testing the EMMC flash module. So we'll run all the tests. And wow, these really are very good results for an EMMC flash module, 299 megabytes a second read, 146 megabytes a second write. That really is very impressive. 
I said it was good we had a SanDisk chip on the board for the eMMC. It clearly is. Anyway, let's now run a test on the connected WD Black NVMe SSD. There we go. And this time I would suggest these are both very impressive and also somewhat disappointing results. Very impressive because these are very high speeds to be recording for storage on a single board computer, but slightly disappointing because this is less than half the performance we can actually get from this drive. But as I said, it's good performance on an SBC. And before we finish here with Crystal Dismark, I want to do a final couple of tests using this SanDisk Extreme Pro SSD. And first of all, I'm going to connect it to one of the standard USB 3 ports. There we go, it's arrived, no windows, I don't want to do anything at all. And I think I have to close this down and reopen it to get it to see the drive, so we will do that. And there we are, it should be down there, it is, and we'll run the tests. And here the results are very much what we'd expect for an external SSD connected via a standard USB 3 port. So I'm sure you can guess what's coming. What I now want to do is to close this down to eject the drive like that and then switch it over from one of the USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports into the USB 3.2 Gen 2. And there we are, it's back again. So we can now relaunch Crystal Disk Mark and I'm going to be very interested to see what results we get this time. And as I hoped, significantly improved results. It's certainly worth plugging this high-speed SSD into that particular USB port, which clearly here on the Latte Panda 3 Delta offers significantly improved performance. Greetings, here I am back again, and once more we're booting the Latte Panda 3 Delta, although this time I'm holding down the escape key so we enter the BIOS as you can see. And we've got a very extensive BIOS here on this board, we often don't have them on an SBC, but basically if you think something should be configurable, it probably is configurable on this system. Although specifically I want to take us down here just to show you that I have disabled the eMMC controller on the board. In other words, I've turned off the 64 gigabyte onboard flash drive. And I did that before I installed Linux Mint on the NVMe SSD to create a very straightforward single boot system. So let's come out of this. In fact, I can just press escape to come out without saving. That's absolutely fine. And we'll speed on through to boot into Linux Mint. And here we are, arrived on its desktop, and everything's working very well in Linux here on the Latte Panda 3 Delta. When we were running Windows, I was connected to a wired network via the Ethernet port. Here though, I'm running using wireless. I've got Wi-Fi working, no problems at all. I've got Bluetooth working as well, so I can report there are no problems with drivers here on the system using the wireless connectivity. And the system is incredibly responsive, even more so than in Windows. That's perhaps not a surprise. We can run up things like the Bluetooth Manager. That's working absolutely fine. This is the latest Bluetooth Manager here in Linux Mint 21. And we'll just run up a browser, show you how responsive things are. Go out to the web, go out to explaining computers. Everything is working fine. We can check out whatever's on the site. As you can see, things are just working very well indeed. And particularly what I wanted to do here was a test to compare the performance of a Latte Panda 3 Delta with some other SBCs. And what I've done is to install the Caden Live Video Editor, which runs very well indeed. There it is. And we'll bring in a file, which is a test edit. And this is a test edit I've used previously, most recently in my video on the Cardass Vim 4 where I compared the time it took to render out this test edit on the Cardass Vim 4 with an 8GB Raspberry Pi 4. And to give you the figures, it took 2 minutes and 19 seconds on the 8GB Raspberry Pi 4 and 1 minute and 32 seconds on the Vim 4. And I remind you that a Raspberry Pi 4 in theory costs $75 and a Vim 4 about $220. So the question is, how long will it take on the Latte Panda 3 Delta? So let's go to Project and Render, and I've got my script set up as I've used previously, and we'll start the script. And, uh, oh, that's looking rather encouraging. I'm not even going to fast forward in time. This is going to be very fast indeed. There it is. Five, 
four, three, two, one. We're going to launch a rocket. And uh, what do we get? 17 seconds. So 17 seconds here on Malate Panda 3 Delta compared to 1 minute 32 on the VIM 4 and 219 on the 8 gigabyte Raspberry Pi 4. And that's a very good indication you get a good price performance ratio if you opt for a Latte Panda 3 Delta. It's an expensive SBC, but you do get an awful lot more performance than, for example, a Raspberry Pi, and certainly a lot more processing power for your money than buying a VIM 4. Final thing I want to say here is just to mention the fan, which is going around quite rapidly on the board right now. But I can report the fan here on the Latte Panda 3 Delta is quieter than the fan on the previous Latte Panda Delta or Alpha models. So it's not a distraction. You could certainly use this board as a media player without your attention being diverted by its fan. Because it's based on an X8664 processor, the Latte Panda 3 Delta doesn't suffer from any of the hardware support issues that plague many of the ARM-based SBCs that I review on this channel. Obviously, given the price, the board isn't a direct competitor to a Raspberry Pi. But if you want an SBC with a lot of power and connectivity, it's well worth considering. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.